Hi everyone. In this video, I am going to discuss about uh, Orem's theory of self-care. That is part two. We will be seeing about the characteristics of the theory, whether Orem's theory fits into the characteristics of theory, uh, the meta paradigm, strengths, limitations and nursing process. So, we know that mainly characteristics of theory, actually speaking, there are seven characteristics which are essential if a theory has to be called as a theory. Okay, so we are just going to quickly see whether Orem's theory is satisfying the characteristics of a theory. Okay, so for uh, students, I would like to say that any theory when it is being asked, like whether it satisfies the characteristics of a theory, please write that all the seven characteristics are fulfilled. Because only when the seven characteristics are fulfilled, it gets a label as a theory. Okay, so the first characteristic of a theory, actually speaking, is the theory means it should interrelate concepts in such a way so that we creates a different way of looking at a particular phenomenon. Now, looking at Orem's theory, yes, for 100% sure, there are so many concepts are there, like for example, self care nursing system, uh, self care agency, self care deficit, all these things are the various concepts. So, Orem has interrelated all these concepts in such a way so that that we are able to understand about one particular phenomena which is called as self-care. So, it is passed. Okay, in the sense like the first characteristic is fulfilled. Coming on to the second characteristics, a theory is, should be logical in nature. So, if you are going to see logical, actually it includes two types of reasoning, inductive reasoning and deductive reasoning. Uh, let me tell you that Orem's theory have been tested by a lot of research studies by using both inductive and deductive reasoning and so it satisfies the second characteristics. Number three, a theory should be simple at the same time it should be generalizable. If you are just going to browse the number of research studies which are being done, we know that it is such an easy theory so many researchers have already used this particular theory in their research project. Not only that, it is generalizable. Self-care is applicable for a toddler. Self-care is applicable even for an elderly. It is applicable for male or female or Asians or Americans or Africans. So, it is generalizable theory. So, it satisfies the third characteristics. Number four, it should be, uh, the theory should be the basis for hypothesis which can be tested. So, again, using deductive reasoning, uh, research studies have been done to test about Orem's propositions. But let me tell you, though we say that uh, hypothesis has to be tested, one of the limitation of Orem's theory is that it comes under the grand theory. Okay, so you will not find concrete operational definitions or concrete propositions which are given by Orem, but still a lot of research studies have been done to test whether Orem's theory is, you know, the proposition is supported or not supported. So, next we will move on to the fifth characteristic. Theory should contribute, theory should assist in increasing the general body of knowledge. You and me, 100% we will accept that Orem's theory has added to the body of nursing knowledge, especially in care of patients who are suffering from self-care deficit. Even today, when we are, uh, what to say, when we write examination, especially uh, MSc nursing examination, practical examination, when you find that a patient is going to be a bedridden patient or a patient requires a lot of care from the nurse, immediately the theory which we use is Orem's theory. So, definitely this theory has helped us to shape the view of nursing. It has increased the body of knowledge. It can be used by practitioners. Yes, it is used by practitioners. It is used by staff nurses. It is used by nursing students when we are taking care of a patient with self-care deficit. And the last uh, characteristic is a theory means it should be consistent with other theories. So, there are a lot of theories which do support Orem's theory. There are a lot of theories which has come out, you know, from the Orem's theory. So, uh, in one sentence, let me tell you that Orem's theory satisfies all the seven characteristics of a theory and so it is considered as a theory. 
Okay, so that is the answer. So you should be uh, thorough with the seven characteristic, especially PG students. You should be thorough because it is an important question. Where define theory? Uh, what are the characteristics of theory? Enlist the purposes of theories, etc. So if you're thorough with the seven characteristics, you can apply that for any nursing theory. Next, let us move on to the meta paradigm according to Dorothy I. E. Or we know that the meta paradigm which we usually discuss are person, health, environment, and nursing. So first, let us see. Who is a person according to her? She believed that a person is a total being, which means that it is not only the physical needs, but there are certain universal needs, there are certain developmental needs, which, and this individual is capable of continuous self-care. So she believed that a human being is having a lot of self-care requisites, so it is a total being. And then she said that this human being can function biologically, symbolically, and socially, which means according to Oram's view, a patient, so I'm sorry, a person is someone who can interact with other people, who can communicate with other people, who can function independently, who can communicate symbolically etc. Now for students let me tell you we know that uh, when we are going to write the meta paradigm you know that Oram has discussed about the various self-care requisites is it not like uh, developmental self-care requisite health deviation self-care requisite and the uh, universal self-care requisite so you can write in the exam a person is someone a person is a human being who has three types of self-care requisite and he is considered to be a total uh, being according to Oram. Okay, next we'll move on to nursing client. So that is according to a person. But who is a nursing client? Nursing client is a patient. Okay, that is a person. Now she specifically defined who is a patient. Patient is a human being who is having some limitations in health, which is making him incapable of continuous self-care. So it's very simple. We know that even a first year BSc student will tell that according to Oram, who is a patient, a patient is a human being uh, who is having certain health related ailments. Maybe it is a spinal cord injury, maybe it is a fracture femur, okay, or maybe it is unconsciousness. So this person is having some health problem because of which he is not able to, he is not having the ability to take care of himself. It's simple, no? So that is the definition of a nursing client. And what is the focus of nursing? Whenever the self-care requisite is exceeding the self-care capability, you label that human being as a patient. That is, if somebody is able to meet all the self-care, then it is a person. But if somebody is not able to meet the self-care, then Oram will say that this person is a nursing client, which means in simple words, a patient. So that is according to the meta paradigm person. So let me repeat, person is someone who has all the self-care requisite. A person is someone who is a total being. Nursing client is someone who is having some health problem and because of that health problem, he is not able to take care of himself and his self-care abilities. Okay, the self-care abilities are found to be less and he is not able to meet the self-care requisite. Now coming on to environment. According to Oram, what is environment? Environment, she uh, specified somewhere in her theory that environment has physical features, chemical features, biological features. She is also told that environment means it includes family, it includes culture, community, which means very clearly she has told main things about the external environment. She told that there is the family can come in there environment, culture can come in the environment, the community itself can come in the environment. And in addition, Oram has introduced some new words. What are the new words? Enthronement factors, enthronement elements, enthronement conditions, developed environment. But she has not discussed a lot about this in her theory, but she just stated that all these things are a part of environment and so that comes as a limitation for Oram's theory because she has used a lot of concepts but you know adequate explanation is found to be missing okay so environment is something which includes family culture community etc next let us move on to what is health according to Oram a person she you know she was a person who completely supported the definition of WHO we know what is WHO's definition of health is it not a health is a state of complete physical social and uh, you know Know, all the well-being and not merely a disease or not merely an absence of disease or infirmity okay so which means it complete right so that is who's definition so Oram is supporting the definition and she is saying that the person should be able to structurally and functionally be a whole person it's not that only structurally if you are whole you are considered to be healthy structurally and functionally if you're going to be healthy Oram will say that yes you are healthy 
she also said that uh, health is somewhere where a person is able to self reflect symbolize communicate which means we just studied no in person that someone has to a human being is someone who can respond to others who can communicate to others who can reflect on oneself so when you are able to do everything overall will say that you are healthy and she was very careful to say that health is not only the health of an individual it is also applicable to health of a group okay so which means like there are certain theorists who always have the limitation that uh, this theorist has told that uh, person is only individual person is not a group but overall was very careful she said that health is not only for the individual it can also be for the group so what is the take away point about health please remember this one point overall supported who's definition of health right so what is who is telling everything total well being so she said okay it should be total structurally and functionally it should be whole coming on to what is nursing nursing is i have highlighted the word someone who is giving specialized assistance to persons with disabilities it is not just like that someone is coming and doing certain things no that is not nursing nursing is a person with a uh, person is giving a specialized assistance to a person with disability i want you to go to the second point nursing is deliberate nursing is systematic nursing is having a purposeful action which means deliberate is it's not like casually i go and do something i know what should be done i think about it i know okay i can do an assessment i try to understand okay this patient is having all these needs which has to be met these are his therapeutic self care demand so deliberately a nurse is someone who is deliberately doing certain things for the patient it is deliberate she is systematic it's not haphazardly doing certain things so what is nursing she kept nursing at a higher level what did oram say about nursing nursing she said that a nurse is someone who is going to give a systematic care who is going to deliberately plan and give care she is going to give a special assistance to those people who are not able to take care of themselves who are not able to take care of themselves then she said that point you know that picture you remember which we discussed in the last video nursing is needed whenever an adult is not able to take care of himself that's it you know he not able to take care of himself either to sustain life or to recover from disease or to cope up with an illness for anything when a person's ability is not enough then nursing is going to come but she also reminded that whenever a nurse is going to give care to the patient there is a chance for conflicts to occur we know what is conflict conflict is because a nurse is going to have a lot of roles she may be a daughter she may be a wife she may be a mother of children she may be a peer group member okay maybe she is a subordinate or maybe she is a leader so so many roles are there patient is also having multiple roles patient is a father patient is a son patient is going to be a colleague patient is going to be some administrative leader someone else so multiple roles are there so oram was very careful to say that when people with so many roles are getting interacted there is a chance that sometimes role conflict can take place the reason is we are doing concurrent roles as i told you so many roles concurrently we are having so many roles patient is having so many roles so there is a chance that conflict can occur so that is about meta paradigm so let me tell you what is meta paradigm let us talk about the keywords okay number 1 person person is a total being again who is a nursing client nursing client is a person who is not able to meet his self care that is a nursing client okay he has requisites developmental universal but he is not able to meet his self care number 2 what is environment family culture physical biochemical everything together is called as environment what does men by health health is sound mind sound body okay structurally and functionally whole supporting the definition of who what is nursing very simple nursing is an a persons who are capable of giving a special assistance especially when somebody is not able to meet their self care needs and also nursing is deliberate it is going to be systematic okay and uh, she is going to sometimes there is a chance that conflicts can happen see even if you don't remember anything about nursing uh, students i would like to tell you you please remember about nursing system what is nursing system partly compensatory wholly compensatory supportive educative right based on that you write the definition that nurses are people who are going to meet the self care needs of the patient they can either be a system 
system of wholly compensatory, partly or supportive educator. Learn it in a simple way. Okay, make make the things very simple so that you are able to remember. Because the problem is when you study so many theories, when you study so many meta paradigm, everything will start confusing. So basic things we should be strong. When you know that a person, according to Oram's theory, is someone who is dependent on the nurse. Health is when she is able to do structurally and functionally whole. Nursing is wholly partly supportive educative, deliberately giving care, judging, evaluating and giving care for the When you get the keywords, I am sure that you will be able to write a meta paradigm in a better way. Shall we move on to the next? What are the strengths of Orem's theory? Let me tell you, Orem's theory is a beautiful theory. It has a lot of strength because number one, it is applicable for nursing. Even a beginning nurse can easily understand what is Oram's theory. That is why even in, in, um, uh, in India, if you are going to see, according to Indian Nursing Council syllabus, uh, students study a little bit of what is Oram's theory. Because it is easy to understand, it is applicable even for a beginning nurse practitioner. But let me tell you, though it is, uh, though it is appearing to be easy, Oram's theory is a bit complex. Okay, though you will not agree with me, I will tell you, it is a bit complex. Because the more and more you read in depth about Oram's theory, you will understand that Oram has written a lot of words. Just now we studied enthronement factors, elements. Now she will talk about basic conditioning factors. She will talk about various steps in nursing process which are slightly different from our original nursing process. So all those things to conceptualize that, to understand that, it's a bit, you know, in depth. So it it is applicable not only for beginners, but also for people who are advanced clinicians. Number two, it is a comprehensive basis for nursing practice. Yes, it is a comprehensive basis. You can apply this theory not only in nursing practice. We can teach students in the area of nursing education, nursing administration. So, in the profession of nursing, it can be applied. So, that's what? Utility for professional nursing, practice, education and administration. And then the second point is it is a comprehensive basis. It is a foundation for nursing practice. Next is the terms, you know, though so many terms are there, but still it is easily understandable. What is self-care? What is self-care agent? What is partly compensatory? What is wholly compensatory? It is easy to understand. So that is uh, that is something which can be a strength of Oram's theory because people don't find it very difficult to study Oram's theory. Though so many concepts are there, it is relatable and so it is easy to study. Next is, she specifically defines when nursing is needed. Uh, like, we know specifically, if you're going to see that picture, she has put that when the self-care self -care agent's capability is going to be less than the demand, okay, then there is a need for nursing. You remember that picture? So, that is how she specifically tells when nursing is needed for a particular patient. That is her strength. And then her self-care approach is contemporary with the concept of health promotion. Health promotion and health maintenance, not only for primary, you can use it for secondary prevention and also for tertiary prevention. The nursing systems are clearly delineated. We have to congratulate Oram for that because you see that picture of nursing system. Beautifully, she has told nurse is one side, patient is one side. Nurse will do what all, patient will do what all in wholly compensatory, partly and supportive educator. So that picture gives more clarity. And so that's something very nice in Oram's theory. And it is generally that is wonderful thing. You can apply it to a mother who is in labor. You can apply it to a patient who is uh, elderly. You can apply it for a patient who is in the community. Okay, it is generalizable. Anyone having problem in the self-care, he can utilize forums theory. So, these are the strength of the theory. At least to name, to remember, you can just imagine, okay, all the concepts are easy for us to study. So, it is interrelatable. The picture is beautiful in Oram's theory. So, I know when exactly nursing is needed. I, that nursing system explanation is so wonderful. It is a generalizable theory. It can be used by any nursing professional, maybe a beginner or maybe even an advanced clinician. It can be used for nursing practice, education, research or administration. So, if you can write few points like that, it's very good. Next is limitations of Oram's theory. Amidst all these strengths, there are certain limitations. What are they? Number one, it is simple, but it is complex. As I told you, enthronement, enthronement elements, basic conditioning factors. Next, we will study about regulation, prescription. You know, all those words, when you see together, you will think, my God, why Oram has brought all those things? Why Oram is telling new, new things in the nursing process? Why basic conditioning factors was not explained inside the theory? In her theory, she has not told any one word also about basic conditioning. How suddenly basic 
conditioning factors came into this why she told about enthronement right so all those things you know though it is appearing simple it is a bit complex theory number 2 lot of terms are there which are somewhat similar and somewhat confusing self care self care agency self care demand self care deficit self care requisite you know all those words are appearing simple but at the same time it is very uh, bit multitude of terms sometimes it is confusing for the students and then uh, orum said that uh, wholly partly supportive educator then uh, how is it possible that orum was able to put a patient only under three headings that is a critic that is a critic for orum's theory like you say that how can orum say that only these three things are there wholly partly and supportive educator what if another subdivision comes over there okay why is she so rigid you know it's a critic okay it is not a real limitation it is a critic critics are like that they will always tell this is not right this could have been better right so that is limitation so it is confined to three conditions and that is somewhat indicating rigidity and the last one limited acknowledgement of emotional needs she is talking about physical needs she is talking about meeting this physical needs she is talking about universal needs but somewhere uh, critics feel that she has not given importance much to psychological or emotional so these are the limitations so what are the limitations of orum's theory so many terms are there so many related terms are there it is appearing simple but it is little bit complex it is little bit confusing how can she say only patients can come under three things it is indicating rigidity and uh, why she has not talked more about psychological needs of the patient okay next we are going on to the last part of the uh, presentation that is nursing process okay now in this uh, video i will only be telling about how is nursing process theoretically how orum has put and i will be uploading one more video on application of uh, orum's theory uh, according to nursing process maybe uh, later okay so in this now let us see how has orum viewed the nursing process according to orum nursing process is a system to determine why a person is under care and what i should do for him what is the plan for care and how i am going to implement the care it's very simple you know it's very simple like you go to a patient and then you are going to say think like okay why this person needs a wholly compensatory system okay okay then i understand why i got the answer because the patient is unconscious then i'm going to plan the care and then i'm going to implement the care right so that is nursing process according to orum and she also said that it is a method to find out what are all the self care deficit of the patient and then what role a nurse has to take in order to meet the demand again it's very simple you go near a patient okay you are making an assessment okay and then you find okay i may have to help the patient for all hygienic needs maybe i'll have to help the patient for mobility maybe exercises etc right so you are going to find out what are all the self care deficit of the patient and based on the self care deficit i'm going to determine okay so the system which i'm going to apply for this patient is wholly compensatory system so that is nursing process according to or finding out the deficit and determining the type of nursing that has to be given now according to orum steps we know nursing process has five steps assessment nursing diagnosis goal or objective you know plan of action with uh, rational implementation evaluation but according to orum she believed that there are only three steps in nursing process orum's nursing process is having three steps to find out okay what are they the first step is diagnosis and prescription okay diagnosis is you go near to the patient and you determine okay what is the problem of this patient and uh, what has to be done you are going to make a judgment okay this patient needs care but not wholly compensatory he is able to do a part of it okay then i may think about partly compensatory first is you are going to find out why and uh, you are going to prescribe okay what nursing care has to be given for the patient diagnosis and prescription number 2 is designing a nursing system and planning the delivery of care designing a nursing system is okay i first step i diagnosed i prescribed okay i thought okay this is how i am going to do next is i am going to design i'll okay i'll make a plan for exercise i'll make a plan for say his meeting his nutritional status meeting his hygienic needs i am designing a nursing system and the last one is production and management that is planning and controlling these are the words she, which uh, orum has used you may find it little bit different okay diagnosing prescribing designing a nursing system production and management what she meant actually there is implementation and evaluation now let me tell you if you are going to apply that five step nursing process here, here diagnosis and prescription can be 
okay assessment nursing diagnosis and objective okay and design of a nursing system can be plan of action and implementation and evaluation is going to be production and management i repeat it diagnosis and prescription can be the first three that is assessment nursing diagnosis and objective you're prescribing number two is designing a nursing system where i'm going to make a plan plan of action and implementation and evaluation comes under production and management so what is step one so step one just now we saw it is diagnosis and prescription again orum has said in step one she said that we have to acquire the data and we have to prescribe this we have just now discussed and she said there are six areas where i have to collect the data from the patient step 1 diagnosis and prescription a nurse has to collect the data in six areas what are they number 1 i should find out what is the health status of the person number 2 i should see what is the physician's perspective of the person's health status number 3 what is the person's perspective number 4 what are the health goals okay based on the life history based on the lifestyle based on the health status of the patient <clears throat> what are the requirement of self care and what is a person's capacity to perform self care it is very simple the first thing is i am going to see what is the health status whether he is uh, healthy or whether he is moderately healthy you know just the health status and then oram said that i should see what is the physician's perspective which means what is the medical diagnosis of the patient maybe this patient is uh, suffering from say ulcerative colitis that is a physician's diagnosis number 3 i have to ask the patient what is your perspective related to your health okay i want to make a clear thing whether this patient has understood what is the disease that is ulcerative colitis so i am going to find out the person's perspective <clears throat> number 4 is what are the health goals now i know the condition of the patient i know the physician's thing i know what is the health st status what is the lifestyle based on this i am going to find out what are the health goals which has to be met for this patient number 5 what is the requirement and what is the capacity in which all areas this patient with ulcerative colitis needs care what are the requirements and last step is what is the capacity requirements is maybe the patient should learn about diet control the patient should learn about the drug regimen compliance okay so so many things are there and uh, last one is what is the person's capacity to perform those self care so these are the six areas which oram is telling us to collect but one problem is all these things were not told inside the theory okay so that is why we feel that somewhere all it is complex okay the person self status physician's perspective person's perspective what are the health goals what are the requirements what is the capacity next is the step 2 step 2 is okay i have made a diagnosis i have done a prescription next is i am going to design that is a plan of care so what are the ways to help the patient the nurse is going to design a system she is going to plan maybe it can be wholly partly or supportive educated and then she said two steps are essential number one is you find out what are the components of demand what is the demand of the patient and number two you have to find out a helping method which can compensate that particular demand see all these things are little bit you know again and again it comes but it's very simple you're designing a regulatory operation right so what are you going to do here you're going to find out okay i'm going to make a plan of care so i'm going to systematically find out what are the demands and i'm going to make a plan of care for the patient this plan can either be wholly partly or supportive educated last step number 3 production and management you remember i told you it is equal to implementation and evaluation so what is the nurse going to do she is going to implement how is she going to implement she is going to act consistently in order to meet the unmet needs in order to meet the prescribed needs and then in some cases it's not that always nurse has to do in some cases if the patient is able to do she will help the patient to carry out the develop uh, in order to develop a self care agency maybe uh, first four days maybe i did the uh, you know i help the patient for a colostomy dressing but later on slowly slowly i want to develop that patient to do this colostomy care by himself 
by herself right so that is called as developing the self care and all those things are implementation and uh, whatever is the etiology based on that you will meet the action so in simple words i am helping the patient consistently uh, in order to meet the needs or i will help the patient to develop the capacity in order to meet the self care needs and then she said that these are the various ways how a nurse can help what are the various ways either i can perform or i can assist Number two, I, sometimes I will not perform, I will not do, but I will help the patient to do. Coordinating everything, okay, standing there, telling the patient, guiding the patient, guiding, directing, supporting, all those things nurse can do. She can stimulate the patient's interest, maybe by encouraging, by giving uh, good words of praise, telling that, wow, that's great, you're doing well, okay, the first step. you have covered it wonderfully what about the second step of procedure so you encourage the patient stimulate the patient's interest maybe you stimulate and support and guide the patient as they are experiencing their illness monitor it that is one way of implementation especially in a critical care unit you will have to monitor the health status of the patient and then you help the patient to make an evaluation a nurse will make an evaluation the patient will also make an evaluation how the implementation was what is the meaning of the result so this step is very simple it talks about implementation and evaluation implementation is you are going to consistently do the action or you are going to help the patient to meet the his self care by himself different ways of helping guiding or you know assisting or doing for the patient or monitoring the patient encouraging the patient all those things making judgment and so the last point under the step is evaluation so the nurse is going to help the patient and the family member to describe what is the result what is the evaluation she has to evaluate the result by collecting evidences in order to find whether a design system was effective or not so it's a very simple step which talks about implementation what are the various things a nurse can do for implementation and very important is evaluation patient makes an evaluation nurse makes an evaluation so that is about the second part of orem's theory and in this video we have completely discussed about whether orem's theory satisfies the seven characteristics of a theory what is the meta paradigm according to orem's theory what are the strength of the theory lot of strengths are there limitations are also there though it is a very simple theory it is complex there are certain things which were not being discussed in detail by orem statically indicating three systems which can indicate it is rigid and so on okay and the last part is nursing process i understand that the five step nursing process is put under three steps according to orem's theory where she is first she is telling first you diagnose and prescribe number two you design and number three you product and manage what is the first step diagnose and prescribe you find out why this patient needs care what care he needs number two is designing a care designing a wholly compensate what are all the various things i should do in order to help the patient planning for that and the last one is implementing that and evaluating that implementing you can do a lot of activities starting from doing till guiding and monitor and last evaluation so all these are the three steps which is being told by orem in order to apply it as a nursing process so let me tell you orem's theory has three step nursing process do you remember any other theorist who said about three step nursing process it was betty newman betty newman's theory also you have three columns but when i'm going to put it in an application form maybe uh, in the future video you will find that orms that three step is not coming in the care plan okay you will find that as usual we are writing but there are certain other things which comes like basic conditioning factors and many things so these are the limitations in orms theory where certain aspects is not being covered in detail inside the theory but however amidst its limitations i'll tell you that orem's theory is a wonderful theory which can be used even by a beginning practitioner which can be easily understood even by a first year nursing student so thank you all for your great encouragement and for your uh, patient listening i hope and i pray that this video is going to be useful especially for all the nursing students thank you